Welcome to chapter 5 of our study. Um, in this particular chapter, we will be focusing on the overhead as well as the absorption costing method. So as I said before in the last chapter for the cost classification, that we can classify the cost based upon, uh, for example, using chaseability method. And that means the total cost of the product will include the prime cost, which means the total direct costs, plus the overhead expenses, which means the total indirect costs. So suppose that we got the overhead, which means the total indirect costs will include either will be production overhead expenses, which means these will be the overhead expenses within the factory, and non-production overhead expenses, this will be the overhead expenses outside the factory. So the examples would be, within the factory we've got the indirect material, labour, as well as other expenses. For those non-production overhead expenses, for example, we've got admin expense, such as the bad debt expense related to customer, if they don't pay for us money. Selling and distribution, distribution overhead expenses related to different wheel codes and also marketing expenses and also finance costs and also the research and development expense, tax expense will be an example of non-production overhead expenses. But our aim is, for example, we can use absorption costing methods to make sure that the production overhead expenses will be charged into the final product, which means what will be the costs that the product will incur for those production overhead expenses, that's all we need to know, and that's our objective really. And we're going to use the absorption cost in a second. So, the starting point is I'm going to give you lots of examples related to production and non-production overhead expenses onto the next page of the note onwards. So first of all, for those production overhead expenses, for example, we've got indirect material costs, including the cleaning chemicals, disposal tools, protective devices, and bolts, and so on and so forth. That's not directly related to uh, the increase in volume of the materials. Uh, so, for example, if you were to produce more product, yes, you need the raw material A and so on, but the cleaning chemicals will be used for all those, um, for example, for uh, all those, I don't know, raw materials, um, perhaps some materials would uh, utilise more of these cleaning chemicals than the others, and that would be absolutely fine. So that's indirectly related to the production volume of that particular product, and that's what I mean by indirect costs. And also labour costs can be indirect as well, for example, we can talk about the production supervised salary, purchasing staff or procurement manager salary, materials handling staff's salary, which means moving the material from this area to that area, materials management staff salary, because that tends to be, I mean, fixed, um, so irrespective of how many units they're going to produce, and quality control staff salary, again, those will be the indirect labour costs, and also, overtime premium but not specifically related to this particular job because as I said before in the last chapter if the customer requires you to uh, work overtime and um, of course the overtime premium or the, the amount of money they're going to pay for the workers uh, would be specifically directly related to this job but if the customer does not require you to work overtime so which means your company, your, your worker will simply work overtime because, for example, in the morning it's a lack of sales order, so you have to work late. Um, so the company pays for the workers for the overtime premium expenses, and that's not related to one particular job, and hence we're going to cheat that as the overhead expense. Indirect expense will include, for example, the rental expense for the factory, insurance costs incurred in the factory, light, heat and power costs incurred in the factory as well. So those will be the examples that you can refer to again and again uh, in later studies or also in later papers. Non-production overhead expenses, as I said before, for example, for the admin overhead, 
Uh, I mean, for the non-production overhead expenses into your statements of profit or loss, all we can do is we're going to, I mean, cheat that as the period cost. So, for example, we've got the admin overhead, uh, for example, we've got the management salaries, training costs, and also the staff costs for processing your data, and also some of the bad debt expense related to customer not paying for you. Selling and distribution costs will be an example of non-production overhead expenses, so for example, packaging costs, the sales manager salaries, the running costs of the sales showrooms, we're going to show your cars and show your course and that kind of stuff. Distribution costs, for example, delivery wheel co and advertising expense related to selling overhead expenses. And finance costs, yes, for example, interest paid. Also tax expense will be an example of the non-production overhead expenses because that's not related to the fact chain because that's where occur. those costs will be incurred outside the fact chain. So, as I said before, on the next page of the note, first of all, just a reminder of what we've done so far is we can classify costs in different ways. And one of the ways that we can classify costs is by traceability. As I said, uh, it is for, I mean, mainly for financial reporting purposes because we need to know, okay, what will be the cost of this pen? So not only we need to spend the raw material and time to produce this pen, but at the same time, we need to link our overhead expenses. So for example, the uh, previous example, different overhead expenses, for example, indirect expenses, indirect labor costs, uh, and also indirect material costs, for example, the factory rent and salary of quality control staff, that kind of stuff. We need to chase it back into one particular use of products that we produce. So if that's the case, the total cost of our product will include the prime cost as well as the overhead expenses or overhead costs if you like. And that means the prime cost will be the total direct costs and the overhead expense will be a total of this indirect cost. And so all we can do is to say, right, if I were to produce a pen, of course we need plastic, we need components, uh, electronical components, and also we need some of the, uh, I don't know, the um, direct labour costs. So if that's the case, the prime cost we include the direct material costs, of example, two dollars. Direct labour costs, let's say three dollars. Also, some of the direct expenses because we are branding APC's logo, and hence uh, we need to give two dollars for each pens that we produce to APC. So the total prime cost would therefore be seven dollars. And what will be the overhead costs? Well, overheads will be related to indirect material, indirect labour, as well as the indirect expenses. So you can see that material, labour and expenses will be the cost classification based upon the nature of the cost. So all of those are indirect. So for example, the total of these overheads is to be $10 or $100 within the fact check. So, if it is $100 in total, but we would like to establish the cost per pen, so if that's the case, how we can link $100 into per product? How are we going to do that? Well, one of the ways that we can do is we're going to use absorption costing, that we're going to see in a second. Or we can simply call it as the AC. Well, how does it work? So, for example, first of all, we should analyse that within this $100, what will be 
the indar matsewe indar labor and also the indirect expenses we need to analyze that really for example the like next up is that the indirect material costs uh, because we use the cleaning chemicals and that's twenty dollars the indirect labor cost related to overtime premium that we're going to pay for the staff is just to be 30 remainder will be 50 for the indirect expenses for example that 50 is related to the factory rent so that's the step one which means we're going to allocate or allocation we're going to allocate that hundred dollars into different reasons and we're going to charge that into different cost center which means okay that twenty dollars of the indirect material related to the department one and that's the indirect labor related to department two worth thirty dollars and what about the next our fifty well both of these departments will share that fifty dollars yeah it's simply because as you can say we are here and you are there and we need to incur the $50, not because you're here, but also we are there. So we combine these two together, and that's the reason why we need to pay for $50. And hence, both these departments share the same cost or overhead expense. And that's the reason why let's now come to the remaining of that 50 because we've allocated that 20 and 30 to each cost center, which means departments of Eddie. So the step two that we're going to do is we're going to apportion that fifty dollars. So we're going to say, right, our aim is to first of all establish what would be the overhead cost for different cost centers, for example, departments, so we can absorb that into the final product. But how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we know that we've got two departments, for example, the department one, department two, incurring the indirect material and indirect labor costs. Absolutely fine. Put that there. Department one is what's well department two, or D1 and D2. That stands for two different cost centers. The uh, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to apportion that $50 into the department one as well as the department two. And how are we going to do that? Well, using absorption costing, that will involve a little bit of guesswork. So, for example, you can apportion that $50 of the rental expense into different departments based upon the number of employees in each department. Alternatively, based upon the floor area within each of these departments. You can also, based upon the sales revenue that you can earn for each of these departments, or costs that you've incurred for each of these departments. So, suppose. Let's make the scenario a little bit easier. So suppose we've got 50 meter squared in the department one, and another 50 meter squared in the department two. So all we can do is to say, right, if we combine these 50 together, and that would give me a hundred meters squared. So we simply take fifty dollars, the indirect costs, indirect expenses related to factory uh, rental expense. And we're going to apportion that over 100 meters squared, and that would give me 0.5 dollars per meter squared. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, of course, we're going to charge that 0.5 into each of these departments. So, for example, 50 times 0.5, and that will give me 25 here, another 25 here. So, so far, so you can see, first of all, we allocate the uh, costs that can be clearly seen by the business of 20 for Department 1 and 30 for Department 2. So, for example, so far, combined with the Step 1, we've allocated 20 and 30 already. At the same time, the Step 2, that we apportion that rent of 50 into Department 1 and 2 already. So, if that's the case, that would give me the total overhead cost for department one is to be 45 
because we take these plots that and 55 for department 2. And the last thing that we're going to do is to step 3 because our aim is to establish what will be the overhead that we're going to absorb, which means this product will incur that overhead expense. What will be the overhead expenses that this product will incur per unit? And that's the reason why in our step 3, we're going to do something called absorption or absorb that over expense into one particular product. And in this case, for example, suppose that department one is labour intensive, which means we rely on human beings to work, and machine intensive for department two. So when we apportion things, we are simply saying that, for example, the total labour hours in department one is to be 45 hours as the total machine hours in the department 2 suppose it's 55 hours to make that simple so all we can do is going to calculate something called the overhead absorption rate I can call it the OAR if you like So, in calculating OAR, all we can do is we take one divide by another, that's all. So, we simply take $45 divided by 45 hours, so that would give me $1 per hour. And then $1 per hour because we take $55 divided by 55 hours. So, once we establish the overhead absorption rates, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to charge that into one particular product. So, for example, we've got product one, and we need two labour hours in department one, and three machine hours in department two. And all we can do is we simply times one as the overhead absorption rate and plus 3 times 1 as the overhead absorption rate in department 2 as we just calculated before. Plot that into a calculator and that should give you $5 as the total overhead expense that you absorbed into that particular product. And of course, as I said, the product cost will include two things First of all, as the indirect cost is a total, and secondly, we include the total of these direct costs, or we can call it the prime cost. In this case, for example, the direct material labour related to part one is to be 10, so the total of our cost will be 15. That's how we do it, that's how absorption costing actually works. So, for example, how we derive that five dollars and that's how we do it. So that means as you can see we are absorbing the total of its a hundred dollars into the final product cost as the over expense for the uh, I mean cost elements within the part one is to be five. How are we going to do that? Of course as I said before first of all step one uh, allocation allocates the indirect material labour that's specifically to one cost centre but for those costs that are incurred for both these cost centres or more we need to do the apportion in a step two and finally after we establish the total overhead expenses for different cost centre normally will be departments and we simply calculate the overhead absorption rate by dividing by the number of machine or labour hours in absorption costing and hence we can absorb that or we can charge that to the product costs such as what we've done here. So as so you can see in your study notes onto your uh, page of the total cost idea you will see the three steps approach here okay? and you can use the mnemonic for this is called AAA or chip away approach if you like in a second okay 
Right, I'm going to stop here. I mean, on to the next page, you will see the diagram here. It's just what we've done here. And also, we've got the idea called reapportion as well. We're going to explain that in a second. So, uh, for, I'm going to stop here because in our next of our section onwards, we'll be detailing the steps in much more detail. For example, how we're going to allocate things and how we're going to reapportion and calculate the absorption. Uh, overhead absorption rate, that kind of stuff. And we'll see if there'll be under over absorption and also the comment about the absorption costing as well. So I'm going to stop here and look for seeing you in the next of our section then. APC, accounting for your future.